anybody knows me knows that about me. I'm so in some way militant in thinking. So there's something I used to say. I used to say that how would ordinary people, ordinary men and women, ordinary boys and girls grow to become kings and already disadvantaged experience? Coming from an already disadvantaged background, how do we ensure that we grow to become kings and queens? How do we ensure that we grow to become influential? How do we grow to become great men and women in our various industries? And that's what I want to share with us today. I'm sure everybody here wants to experience that, right? Talk to me. And I'm going to share just two stories from the Bible. My first question is this. So I'm going to throw a question at you. How far are you willing to go? In my organization, we have a slogan. It simply says, Africa Rising. That is our slogan. Africa rising. If you ask me how far am I willing to go, I will tell you in simple terms that I want to be present. I want my company, Bamboo Group, to be present in every African city. In every major African city. I want to be present in every major African city. But this is me. So I'm going to, in expanding what I'm, going to, what I'm talking about today, I'll share my, a few of my stories with you guys. Um, I was in University of Bonacourt as a young man in University of Bonacourt, through my head. And I remember one day I had um, written the basic exams. The basic exams is actually the exams you write so that you pass and then to be sure that you are ready to enter a one, right? I had written that exams with my friends. Unfortunately, most of my friends have passed that exams except me. Most of my friends have passed that, passed that exams except me. And the few others who did not pass, you know, because of the stigma, because of the shame and the embarrassment, they, look, they all left the reports. But I remember, I stayed back. And I stayed back because at the time, I remember when I was going to school, a mentor, a mentor of mine called me and said something to me that I, I never forgot till today. He said to me, he said, while you are in the school, ensure one thing to make an impact. While everybody is going to school, ensure one thing to make an impact. He said something to me, he said, before you will conquer your city, you will have to conquer your campus. And he said, before you will conquer your state, you have to conquer your city. And he said, before you conquer your nation, you will conquer your state. Before you conquer the continent, you will conquer your country. Mm. And to conquer the world, you will first of all conquer your continent. That stuck in my head. And I had only one mission while I was in the University of Colorado to conquer my campus. If I did, the story is left for everyone to go check out. You know, 
was just need to go to school, I was at the same time running my restaurant business. At some point, I moved from running a restaurant business, because that's the story for another day, to set up a salon where I used to have people who make hair and bag hair, both male and female. And all of this was, I was doing all of this. So someone would ask me, how did I get money to set up these businesses? Actually, I started investing in the Nigerian stock market as long as as far back when I was in secondary school. Right? While I was in school, I stumbled into a book called How to How Understanding the Nigerian Stock Market. I read that book and my life changed. I started investing my pocket monies, you know, all of those monies that I was giving and all of that in the stock market. By the time I was ready to start my first business, I already made a millionaire. I already made over a million. I was already a millionaire by the time I, I turned, I think I turned 19. I was already a millionaire. And that was where got money to start a business. I'm sharing this background story so we understand where I'm going to after this next slide. So the question is, how far are you willing to go? As of the time, I already knew that I was going to work for myself all my life. Bring the idea of maybe working for an organization or doing anything outside of doing business for myself. I started the rest, I started the I moved from there, I actually started a music studio. I bought a group band and became a music producer. A lot of people don't understand that the guy who used to produce for, who produced for Wonder Boy, Larry, used to be my producer. Larry Terry. Of course, as a terrorist, was actually my mentor in those days. Of course, the guy who won the Grammy Awards with Wonder Boy. Come long story short. I started a music studio and that led to several other things I did while I was on campus. Till one day, remember, we're talking about how far are you willing to go, right? One day I sat down and I failed in all of these businesses that I mentioned. All of these businesses have failed. One day, I sat down in my room and I was I was, I was dating a girl at the time. I remember, at the time, she would always tell me, like, all your businesses are failed. You are a failure. How is this how you are going to, you know? Because at the time, I was very popular on campus. That's one thing about being popular and broke. I was very popular on campus when I was broke, mostly broke. And she would tell me, you are broke. You don't have money. How are you going to take care of me? Why she didn't care of me, but then that was a story for another day. But she kept threatening to, to, to leave me, she kept threatening that she was going to leave me, she was going to break up with me and all of that stuff. But then I, I didn't want to break up with this girl, I love this girl so much. And then one day I went back to my room and I, I was thinking, what can I do? And I remember that day I, I was in my room and I was crying. I was like, God, what can I do to really solidify this my popularity? To actually solidify this entrepreneur they called me. Because everywhere I went, they called me entrepreneur. Entrepreneur without money. And it wasn't long after that period I got inspiration to start what I do today. And that was Bamboo Energy. This was around 2000, and, this was around 2008. I think around 2006, 2008. In 2006, 2008. And I started the company called Bamboo Energy Limited. I was on campus, mind you. This was supposed to be an oil and gas service company. That was after I attended one of these seminars in Port Harcourt, I think a market, marketplace, something like that. And I attended that event, and I got inspiration to start that company. Another story for another day. When I started that company, I remember I used to supply diesel at the time. And this was a business I started with complete with zero capital. And I used to tell people that I'm an expert in starting business without funds because I understood sales and marketing. And in about six years, I had grown from zero capital to having over 20 million era as a company. And I was using to do business in about six years. That is how 
actually want you to where we are today. So, from bamboo, real, bamboo energy, we transition into bamboo real estate and construction. From that, we actually now transition into technology, silicon delta, and we are now as a group of companies called Bamboo Group, Bamboo Group Limited. And this is a testament of the Africa rising philosophy. Because from the very onset, I had that vision. You know, when uh, uh, Sir Solomon was talking about vision earlier, I was telling him earlier that I was just laughing. You know, I remember when I was in school, all I talked about was my dreams. All I talked about was how far I wanted to go. If, my, if there is any of my friends from school here, they will tell you that they called me a madman. They said I was, I was a dream. They used to call me Joseph the Dreamer. That all I knew how to do was to dream. But I insisted on dreaming and insisted on building that, building one step at a time towards that vision. And it was not too long after then I realized that if you can see very far, whatever you can see, you can actually come. That is what, ladies and gentlemen, that is what is going to bring me to the two verses of the Bible that I talked about and I'm going to be sharing with you today. So I'm going to share two amazing stories from the Bible with you. Luke 9, 62. Does anybody have the Bible here? Luke 9, 62. Quickly, he talked about, he said, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and looks back and looks back what? it's all fit for the kingdom it's not what? it's all fit for the kingdom anybody who puts his hands to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God this is to tell us one thing if you say this is the journey you want to get into, and you get on the journey. There's no going back. Hands to the plow. When you get to work, when you get to doing what you should do as an entrepreneur, as a business person, as a founder, no amount of challenges should make you look back. No amount of challenges should make you turn back. No amount of challenges should make you give up. You know, it's interesting how entrepreneurs or business owners come online or come on stage and they tell you the sweet parts of their journey. But nobody really gets to talk about the negative parts. Nobody really gets to talk about the disappointments. Nobody really gets to talk about the debts. I tell people that I'm, going, I'm, I'm in debt in, 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 in tunes of billions. <laughs> you know? I was in Abuja a few days ago, one of my staff came to me and he was like, that he's, he's mentally, you know, this generation, at this point, his mental stress. I'm just looking at this guy. I'm like, okay, what's the problem? He said that the, the car that I gave to him, that the car is, is still stressing him, that he thinks that we're a big company. You know, we should change this car, that this car is not, is not befitting of us. I said, is this the problem? I was shocked. He said, yes, this is the problem. I was like, my God. My God. So, and I was listening to him talk about how mentally stressed he was because the car that he was giving was in beauty. And at that point, at that instant, there was a lot going on in my head. I was at this time, I'm, for days, I've put up my phone because I've been getting calls from them, from the people that I'm going, right? And they've been calling me, calling me to no, to no end. And I'm like, I have to tell him, I have to bring out my book. I said, see, look at this. He said, 20,000. No, he said, 2 million. He said, no. That, sir, let him check calculator. I said, this is how much you get I am. Look back! 
we all need every one of us has to be on the plan. When you consider yourself, compare yourself to your counterparts outside of this country. And see the level at which they perform. See the level at which our counterparts. You know, sometimes when I see people, and you know, that is the reason, one of the reasons why I really don't like to be in the, in the, in the public. I really don't like to be in the public. Eye. People who know me know I don't do that. For like the first five years of my company, we never, I never granted interviews, I never was on any podiums, I never was in any platform because I was laser focused. They are telling me my time is over, so I'm just running up with you. So, you must understand that the moment you get it on the ring, there's no way back. There's only one way forward. The second, very quickly, the second Bible verse I'm going to be sharing with us is, um, how do I? Okay. Okay, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus Christ here was talking. He talked about two, two men. He talked about two men. He said one was wise, one was foolish. And he said, the wise man, built his house on what? On the rock. And the foolish man built his house on what? Good. But there's a, there's a part of that story a lot of you may have never heard. And I'm going to share with you today. Is there, do you know any, any person in the history of the world who wakes up, goes to buy resources, buy cement, buy blocks, and goes to look for where the ground is? Not solid and business. I'm knowing that they have to collapse. Do you know anybody like that? No, That's what we do in one thing. In as much as we celebrate the wise, the wise man, the foolish man did not wake up and actually want to build a house for the sun. Something happened, and I will tell you. I will tell you today. When those two people built their houses, guess what happened? They did have to miss everyone. Even the wise man. Congratulated the foolish man and said, Congratulations. He invited his pastors. His pastors prayed and poured oil on that foundation. And everybody told him, Congratulations, you are now a house owner. He did not know. But guess what happened? When the story is told, it looks as if he just built the house and he next day the house collapsed. No! One day, the rain fell. The wise man looked through his window, looked at the foolish man's house. He's still standing. The foolish man looked at the wise man's house. He's still standing. The storms came. Guess what? The house was maybe three years maybe. The house was still standing. Rain fell. Storms came. But the house was still standing. Everything for the first ten years, the house was still standing. They would see themselves in the marketplace and say, hey, fellow house owner, when they call for meetings and say, we are, we are bringing the house owners. They will all come. But guess what? One day, maybe 20 years down the line, maybe 30 years down the line, there was a particular storm that came. There was a particular rain that came. And guess what? It fell. And then the foolish man's house collapsed. And everybody came. The experts came. I started looking. I said, yeah, truly. This man built his house on the sand. But at the time, nobody knew, nobody thought. Even with him, did he think he had built his house on the sand? What does this tell us? This tells us one thing. The Bible, Jesus Christ talked about, he said, don't be like this person who hears and then goes away without putting it to work. That is to say, that is to say, Africa depends on us. We must constantly put in the work that is required for us to be able to build lasting businesses. And to say, remember that our stories, our lives are stories we must tell to inspire the world. Let us begin individually to begin to build our stories, to begin to build our lives in such a way that when it is told, the world will be inspired. Thank you.